So today I'm just gonna enjoy the sun, breathe in some two-stroke fumes and some sawdust, and that'll be that'll be pretty fun. heavy. They're all full of water. And thick. Not to mention it's oak, so it's very dense as well. Yeah. I'm gonna get the tractor. Maybe you saw the first video when we were making the first cut and I talked about how important it was to measure from the pith and up uh, the equal distance on both sides or both ends. So now we we encapsulated the pith in uh, one slab. If I had done a poor job in measuring for the first cut then the pith could have been running upwards or downwards uh, in the log and so you could end up with uh, two slabs that has some of the pith. And it's just not something we can control really, this is just how the tree grows. It's almost always cracked in the middle like this. And sometimes if the pith is really bad, uh, the center slab, as soon as you uh, cut it and you try and move it, it just breaks in half. But over here we can see some really nice looking figured grain here. And this is probably because we have this big uh, branch that's uh, grew out like this. We can see the end grain here. So this was a big branch and it was hanging down from the tree and it had all this weight, you know, with wind and snow and the leaves. Uh, you know, uh, the leaves actually get pretty heavy, they're full of water. And so uh, the wood reacts by, by producing this uh, convoluted grain, like some type of, you know, reaction to stress. And you have all these streaks going through the yearly growth rings here. So that's looking really amazing. And so, and over here just a big section of clear quarter sawn wood with the uh, medullary rays and everything. And it 
oh I can go on and on for hours about this stuff <laughs> so, uh, and same thing over here more medullary rays and just really nice looking curved grain here that, that follows the follows the tree and also you can see the same thing over here we had this branch grew out like this and it created this stress wood here and so uh, figured grain like this is also very sensitive uh, to you know rapid drying uh, it's very prone to to cracking and checking so that's also one uh, uh, one other reason for why you want to dry this so so carefully and slowly uh, sometimes they just crack that's just how wood behaves and so you can see this is a very n nicely shaded area the sun never really gets over this side of the building until late in the afternoon and by then it's uh, it's not warming the, vo the wood very much because now we're in the in the drying months here in Sweden at least it's uh, mid April the humidity is really low and the wind is blowing during the summer it's it's usually not a big deal uh, there's so much there's a lot of humidity in the air during the summer so that kind of protects the surface of the wood but just during the the spring and early summer you can really dry out the surface of the of these thick slabs uh, very quick and you'll end up with with cracks Parts flying everywhere, tiny little ball bearings coming out of the other end of the cut with a uh, very terrifying speed. So that's not so good. My chain is probably, oh it's really messed up. So I'm gonna have to do some filing. These bearings are really easy to replace. They're just, you just remove the C-clips here and you can push it out. But this is probably not gonna be a metric bearing. It's probably gonna be imperial. So that's not going to be the easiest thing to find on a Sunday. It's just stuff that happens, I guess. <laughs> 